The steps when buying a home. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb with eXp Realty. Sam Eliopoulos, Guaranteed Rate. And today we're going to talk about the steps that you take ultimately when you're buying a house. So for example, the first step. Yeah, you got to meet with your realtor. You do got to meet with your realtor. I mean, think of it this way. You wouldn't go into surgery without meeting your doctor first. And that's ultimately what we want to do here. You want to meet with your realtor and go over, you know, what's going on. What are your goals? What are you looking for in this process? And at the same time, you know, there's a lot of laws out there. So you really want to go over the buyer agency laws and, and then commit to one another that you want to work with each other. So that's step one and step two. Step three is really your world, Sammy. Yeah, you got to get pre-approved or pre-committed. And there's a big difference between both. Um, most people get pre-approved or pre-qualified. Uh, pre and a lot of people that are truly serious get pre-committed. And there's a big difference between both of them. One is providing maybe a little bit of documentation. Is that pre-commitment? That's pre-approval. Oh, that's pre-approval. Yeah, and pre-commitment is when you provide everything under the sun for an underwriter to review for, so you have a certificate that way you can buy a house. Okay, so what's pre-qualification? I see that all of the time. Uh, it's when you go to a bank and you just have your credit run and you tell them what you make and there's no verifying of anything. Um, so that 15 minute rocket mortgage thing is kind of pre-qualification, just a scratch on the surface basically. Correct, basically. And I'll say from my world, we don't want that. Like, I mean, it's a competitive market out there where ultimately it's tough to get your offer accepted. If you have just a pre-qualification, um, it's really not signaling to that seller that you've you've gone far enough. Yeah, you have to have a, a, a reputable uh, lender. And in most cases, that reputable lender is going to going to basically tell you, like, let's get you really pre-approved or pre-committed for you to buy this new home. Right. And I think also that's an important part because if you have, because one of the things that I lean on you when we ultimately go into that offer stage, you know, I'll, I'll have you actually on our offer email saying, hey, look, talk to Sammy about the strength of this buyer. And so you really get to have a great sales pitch ultimately of a buyer if they're pre-committed, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, you know, in some cases, it's all about your, your reputation. If you don't have a good reputation, uh, like some of these larger lenders, you're not going to get that house. Right. Yeah. I've, I've been on the seller side where it's like, okay, <laughs> a company that starts with bank and ends with America, you know, we don't really want to talk with this one. And we have another competitive offer that's, you know, from guaranteed rate or another, uh, you know, really good lender. Then we're, you're going to be more inclined with going with them. Of course. Um, so that's step one, two, and three. So if the third step is a really big one, which is the pre-approval, pre-commitment stage. That, that's a very important step. You definitely don't want to jump over that one. And then the fourth, fifth, and sixth step are really the fun part. I mean, ultimately, that's where you define your must-haves and yeah. start you know, figuring out what areas that you're looking in. You know, Maybe schools are important to you or more house is important to you. Of course. Or, Commute to work, you know, those are some other great examples. Of course. Um, so you get all those defined, and then really fun part is you go tour some houses with me, right? You go out with your agent, tour some houses, and, you know, finally fall in love with the house. That's the sixth step. Yeah. You fall in love with the house, right? Now we're writing the offer. Yeah, you make the offer, and then after that? After that, I mean, you know, well, well hopefully we get mutual <laughs> acceptance. Yeah. Now, but that seventh step to kind of come back to it a little bit, this is a really important step, writing that offer. There's a lot that goes into that offer. The first one is, you know, we're, we're using that pre-approval, that pre-commitment that, you know, hopefully that you've written up. Um, we're putting all together a whole package, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. We're looking and evaluating how competitive of a situation is it? Is there an offer review date where there's a lot of offers? If so, trying to figure out how many offers there are on that property to figure out how competitive does our offer need to be, right? Of course. And, and trying to close on time and quickly. And that matters a lot. And well, close on time and quickly, maybe sometimes, because another part of this is we're going to ask the seller, when's your preferred closing date? Right, because yep. if, if they want to close in you know two or three months from now, and you really 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 love this house, you're you're going to try to be as flexible with that as of course. you can. So so this this it's it's a little bit more than just writing an offer. Ultimately, we're digging a little bit deeper, trying to figure out how to write the right offer um, and the most competitive offer. Okay. And then, like I said earlier, one of the big things I do is I actually have you call them and introduce you to have you help sell of their offer, right? Yeah. And it's good because like ultimately I'll, I'll have all your information. I'll be able to like analyze it to a T and, and give you some advice on what the, the do's and do nots. Right. So 
We wrote the offer. We wrote the most competitive offer we possibly can, and we got the offer accepted. And, you know, again, depending on the situation, if there's no other offers on the property, we're not going to write as competitive offer. And that, right. that's, you know, that, that's a thousand houses worth of experiences yep. that I've sold where we're going into the situation trying to figure out what is going on with that other side. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that we can do with that offer. So that writing an offer is the seventh step. And the eighth step is the mutual acceptance of that offer where the buyer and the seller agree. And this is really where a lot of the heavy lifting work kind of gets going, right? Especially in your world. Yeah, yeah. Once we get that contract over, the, the ball starts moving. But once you sign that contract, you have to basically go into escrow, which is right. primarily giving a big check right at the beginning in order to you know hold on to that property. And, and depending on state, right? And, and the escrow laws and the escrow ways are going to depend on state. Here in Massachusetts, generally speaking, remember that this is all negotiable, but we generally put that $1,000 down as the initial offer. Okay. Um, and we have this separate stage, which most, of, most states don't necessarily have, which is called the purchase and sale agreement stage. Um, and so we're moving from eight to step 11 there. We're going to go back and <laughs> fill in. But, but the escrow is part of that. Right, so the escrow comes at both times. One, when the offer is accepted, that binds the offer. That's the terminology we use. And then we're going to write the second deposit check um, at the time of signing the purchase and sale okay. agreement. So, so the escrow is really nine step nine, but also step eleven B, if you will, <laughs> if that makes sense. So generally, we go on our we, we run our escrow, right? We've bound our offer. This is when we want to do the due diligence on on the property that you know we're ultimately buying. Correct. If we have an offer with a home inspection in there. Yep. And the home inspection is the 10th. Yeah. That's you got to make thing. sure that the house is, um, you know, fits your needs. Uh, make sure there's no asbestos. Uh, make sure that the there's no uh, lead uh, or, or crack foundation. Crack foundation. <laughs> that's a pretty serious one. Yep. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So I mean, that that's the big one. The home inspector. You you ultimately want to make sure that you can sleep at night with this yeah. huge purchase that you're you're of doing, course. right? I mean, that's what the home inspection is. It's checking underneath the hood to make sure of you're course. getting something good. And and here's the thing: if you find issues, if you have a home inspection contingency, you know, and we find some issues, this is where we can go back to the seller and, and try to renegotiate a little bit on these issues. This is not to be used as a time where we're trying to renegotiate the whole offer, right? That That's acting in bad faith. We want to act in good faith. If we find serious issues, this is when we want it. We don't want to nitpick them. Of this course. is really what yep. it comes down to. And there's normally like minimums on that or maximums that you can kind of... Uh, well, that depends a lot on how you negotiate the offer, yeah. right? Um, a lot of times in, in, in order to get a lot of these offers accepted right now, we're having to write these, um, their, their thresholds, right? Where we'll say, okay, Mr. Seller, all issues combined under $5,000, we're not going to come back and negotiate with you, aren't. And, and that's something that we're writing in a lot. Or You see a lot of buyers waiving home inspections or maybe doing them for informational purposes in, in this market. Uh, but that's that's really all part of the negotiation, ultimately, um, from, from really step seven and step eight. So it, it depends, and that's where you really need to lean on your, you know, your, your trusted realtor professional. Yeah. Um, so, so we get through the step 10, which is the home inspection. We've negotiated or everything's great. We're, we're sleeping well at night. Yep. Um, that leads us to step 11, right? Yeah. Uh, purchase and sales agreement. That's where everything is truly binding in Massachusetts right. uh, for the second time. Yeah. And I, I kind of jokingly say it this way. The step seven, eight, when you get that offer accepted, right? That's like asking the girl out on a date, right? So we're <laughs> going to go out on the date. We're going to do our little due diligence on one another. And that's the home inspection. Just yeah. make sure if this is really going to work. Um, and, and ultimately, step um, 11 is, is like the engagement ring. Yeah. Because right? I mean, we're putting so much more money down. This is when it's really getting serious. It's if true. we were to walk away, yeah. then um, ultimately there's there's going to be repercussions on it. And then I consider the marriage being actual <laughs> closing. But we'll get to the marriage in a couple seconds. So step 11, purchase and sale agreement, right? Yeah. And then it's kind of back to your world, right? This yep. is really when you're picking up the ball for step 12. Yeah, yeah. So essentially we'll do the uh, initial application, which is uh, pretty much taking all the information he did on the pre-commitment or pre-approval all over again, make sure that nothing has changed again, make sure you haven't changed jobs, uh, make sure you haven't gone out. And Big no-no. Yeah, don't change, <laughs> don't change jobs. And no large no, no large purchases at this yeah. point, right? Don't go and buy cars. Yeah, or boats. Your um, boats. Okay, got to throw that in there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, ultimately we'll do, um, we'll re-verify your assets, we'll re-verify your in income and employment, and ultimately, you know, we're going to send it after that to getting an initial approval. And that part 
is going to be reviewed by an underwriter um, after you've signed disclosures, after you've done pretty much everything we've asked you for, uh, to do. Uh, you'll have that initial approval that will be conditional. There'll be a few things on there, which ultimately is going to be a big piece here. It's the collateral, the home appraisal. Right. And, and that's step 13. Yeah, correct. Yep. And step 13 with appraisals, basically what we're going to do is we're going to have somebody independently go out there verifying that what you're buying is actually worth that money. If it's not, then you have to go back to the drawing board. But assuming that everything looks good, that appraisal is going to be reviewed by the underwriter again, at which point you're getting on the step 14 final loan commitment. And essentially that just tells you that the lender, which is me, is going to tell you that, yes, I'm going to be able to give you this loan under pretty much every circumstance. Right. And I, I kind of jokingly make fun of you guys because I, uh, I always say you're going to have to give them him everything but a blood sample. Pretty much. Um, but yeah. in, in all fairness, when, when you're going through all of this and yeah. all this heavy lifting and you're asking all of these questions, I mean, you're loaning people a ton of money. And I know that if I was loaning this much money to somebody, I'd probably require more than a blood sample. So, you know, one of the things is, is for, for you, if you're buying a house is, know what you're getting into, knowing the process, knowing that this isn't a simple like, hey, here's my bank statements walking away. You're going to have to answer some questions, especially um, depending on what type of employment you have. I yeah. mean, if you're self-employed, self -employed, it's a whole different world. Yeah, right? that, it's, um, it's a lot more, um, I mean, not only DNA samples and blood samples, but we're going to have to figure out where you came from. You know, right. it's yeah. like, a, was it the Mayflower in Ellis Island? <laughs> it's like... I mean, and, and again, I'm just just knowing what you're getting into, expecting this is, I yeah. think, a, a big part. Knowing that they're doing a little bit more than scratching below the surface, and truly, know they're not doing blood samples or DNA samples, but they're really looking at your bank statements. And um, I remember one time I sold a car, and, and you know, it was a bank statement that was a long time <laughs> ago, and they were like, "Well, where did all this cash come from?" And yeah. I'm struggling to figure out where and then finally I remembered I mean they really do go through with the fine tooth comb. Yep, absolutely big deposits big issues yeah yeah so. so okay so so step 14 we've gotten that final load commitment I mean we're really sailing along out of curiosity you know from when we've gone under agreement to so essentially step eight right mm -hmm. to right now step 14 and when we're kind of coming into closing how much time has gone by on the calendar? It depends. Typically, you know, we can have three weeks, we can have two weeks. Um, you know, it, it really depends on how fast we need the appraisal, if we need an appraisal. Right. But traditionally, it's between three to four weeks. Um, for the loan part. For the loan part, yeah. That's the normal circumstances where you get your final commitment. Okay. So we got the final commitment. This is generally when we're now doing the final walkthrough. This is step 15, the final walkthrough. You're going to walk through the house and just make sure it's being delivered the way that you expect it. And ultimately, that you know, really the way that the seller promised it would be inspected. So you kind of want to make sure that when they were moving out, they didn't put any holes in the walls. And they removed <laughs> all the debris in the house. Yeah. Um, a big one is removed all the paint in the house because I'll tell you what, you want it removed before you buy that house if you don't like the paint that is because paint is a pain in the butt in order to get rid of. <laughs> so this is the final walkthrough. We're just, we're making sure that the things that they promised are, are the way that it's being delivered before you hand them that very right. large step or a large check, I should say, yep. um, which leads us to the next step, which is step 16. And closing. Closing. Yeah. Right? So closing, I just show up as the pretty face at closing. I yeah. don't do anything. So tell me what's kind of going on with closing. Essentially, between the time that you're going to your f final walkthrough and the closing, the attorney and I are going to be collaborating to give all the final documentation for you to sign, in addition to giving you the final closing disclosure. Closing disclosure is literally your receipt to the entire transactions. Um, it tells you what you've already put down. It tells you what your closing costs are. It tells you, you know, what the seller... Um, you know, O's on the home, tells you exactly, pretty much every minute detail you could possibly imagine that's going to be there that you're going to be signing. It's, again, the receipt to your transaction of you I mean, buying the every note, like if you're spending money, if there's an outflow here and there's an inflow here, it shows yeah. you everything. Yep. Right? It's yep. a P&L. That's really right. what it is. Yeah. And, and so they sign that at closing. They yep. sign all of your loan docs at closing, which again, know, nice long package. You got to yep. do the hand exercises <laughs> the night before. That's you're right. For it, right. That's right. Um, so we close, they sign everything. Wire the funds to the seller, right? Yep. It's all part of the closing. Um, and then what? We're, we're going on record, right? Yeah, the attorney basically takes all that information, uh, basically goes to the registry and records the mortgage and the, the new deed that says it's your property. And that's step 17, going on record. Because the closing and going on record are a little bit different, right? The closing it normally happens in the attorney's office. And then they take all those docs and then they run to the, to the, the deed of registry, registry of deeds. Um, and then they actually, um, you know, 
well, handle everything and say, <laughs> hey, look, this is an official you know, yep. a deal. Everything's been done. Money's been transferred, which leads us to the fun part. Moving, um, moving which, in. <laughs> which is moving in. That's step 18. So you get the keys and you're able to move in once you're on record in the state of Massachusetts. Generally Correct. speaking, everybody wants to be on record and make sure that everybody's comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, but those are the 18 steps in buying a house. Um, I think it sounds pretty easy, <laughs> right? For the most part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and, and look, proper planning prevents poor performance. So, you know, going, having that first step, the initial meeting with your realtor, kind of going over your needs and then getting pre-approved by the right bank, not one of those banks with a really bad reputation, which you probably really wouldn't necessarily know unless if you spoke to your real estate agent. Um, you know, those steps and getting clarification on the process really is going to ultimately mean that you're going to have an easier and more stress-free process because this right. can be a pretty stressful trend. Yeah, you know, a lot action. of questions being asked, you right. know, including us. And, that, and that's an important part. I mean, the, having an open line of communication with the buyer, you know, you essentially, and your mortgage lender and your real estate agent is really important. You need to be able to ask all the questions that you can possibly think of, quite frankly, so that way you're comfortable with the sale. So Agreed. if you have any questions about any or all these steps, or if you're thinking about buying a house and you need a mortgage banker, then you should definitely reach out to who? Thank you. Sam Eliopoulos, guaranteed rate. Right. And if you're looking uh, at buying a house here in Massachusetts or really anywhere in the country, um, I know agents throughout the country, really great agents that have a really awesome track record as well. You can always reach out to me. My name is Jeffrey Chubb. I work with eXp Realty. My phone number is 617-480-2600. Or you can get me by email at jeff at boston2.com and then online at boston2.com. So uh, thanks for watching. We look Look forward to hearing from you and uh, until we speak, I hope you're having a great day.